Well, okay then. Uh, just pretend you did not see that. I do not know what went on with OBS there, but it had a little bit of a moment. Just a little bit. But uh, hopefully that's not going to uh, cause any issues later on. But regardless, we can get into the uh, the stuff quickly now. The teams are getting kind of, you know, nice and ready for this match. In case you don't know what match it is, you haven't read the headline at the top. This is Phoenix versus Global Camp, and we are here ready for this. We are absolutely just... Sh I can't even give a descriptor for it. I'm ready for this. It's my first match in a while, and it's Phoenix versus Global Camp. I feel like the matchup, the matchup, the, the matches between these two teams, they're always... Or it's nice and solid, so I'm very much looking forward to it. And we do already have the bands in, along with the first map, so we can get into those. If we get this first band from Phoenix, it's going to be a uh, little bit of a tanker band, which uh, I think is rather expected. No one likes playing tanker. Might as well get out of the way. Ugh, awful. Coming in for this uh, Globacan band. It's also, again, quite expected Suburbia pick. Because uh, Phoenix, they like their suburbia. They very much do. So I can't imagine Globacam, even though they are Globacam, will want to try and uh, roll the dice of luck to try and uh, take that off of them. I, I wouldn't risk it. I certainly wouldn't. Or right, that's not that's not a suburbia pick. What am I thinking? What am I thinking, people? The suburbia ban. There we go. Along with the tanker and the first map. Now correctly is going to be bizarre indeed. The classic. The all-rounder classic. I'm loving it. Yeah, for, uh, hopefully should be no technical difficulties. Uh, just in case you do spot any, I uh, am not aware. Just call them out to me, chat, and uh, they shall be resolved as quickly as humanly possible. Keep an eye out and uh, also enjoy the match at the same time. Of course, that is the prime opportunity here. But if we, I think we have a little bit more time for these teams. Uh, go. You know, hop straight in. They are all in the lobby and waiting for this here. So we can head over to the match page and uh, introduce these teams there along with their players. So first from Phoenix, of course, we have the Diamond Tier team led by the Valiant Captain Gibbs. Been around since Season 1. One of the OG teams. Got Zach Fontaine as well. Malno, Officer Statham, Poz, Roshizi, Skugukin and Sri Lankan. And for Globacan, we've got Auto, Pants, Raphael, Toast, Arsenic, Mixologist, Norseman, of course. The classical team. You, everyone knows. Everyone knows Globacan. Everyone. They are world famous by now. Don't worry about it. Everyone knows them. Now we are ready for these teams to hop straight in. So it shouldn't be too long before we do see them in action. So uh, I'll just let them know we are ready and rearing to go. And then we can go in and it's going to be a very fun time indeed. So while we're here, maybe I can give some uh, predictions. Oh, dare I say that. Uh, some thoughts then to prevent any cursing coming out, you know. Smithy did get a little bit spooked by uh, just me putting out the curse lit icon in Twitch chat just earlier on. So I'll refrain from any direct prediction. So I will continue to stay uh, just with my hopes and dreams right now. So who am I feeling for this match? I think I'm going to be feeling the Global Chem. That is, it's Global Chem. If Phoenix can pull something off here, I, I would be utterly amazed. Uh, Sri Lankan contacted me beforehand saying that maybe they weren't going to be playing their best kind of... Uh, their best right now. They've been kind of unprepared for the Global Chem match, but it's again, like I said earlier on, Phoenix and Global Chem, they are the kind of top matchup. They're normally they're always good regardless. So uh, maybe it's just a a little bit of a curveball for me to throw me off the scent. It's very much a possibility. There you go. You should be able to hear me a little bit better now. Yeah, maybe there are some connectivity issues though on the side of Phoenix and Globe again both kind of uh, not able to get their fifth member in and uh, Anyway, while I'm just looking at the screen we can kind of also talk about who is actually playing in this match Of course, you got Gibbs from uh, Captain Phoenix. We have Paz. We have Russia Z with Sri Lankan and I believe Malno for the fifth player on Phoenix and on Globe again, you got Toast, Auto, Arsenic, Pants and Possibly Thunderpilot. I'm not really sure their fifth man Still kind of waiting to come in. Yes, it is indeed Thunderpilot coming in. 
And uh, that should be the full roster now. So hopefully the technical difficulties are definitely coming in. Uh, not coming in, rather. Please, please not come in. The technical difficulties are staying well, well away. And then uh, these matches, these, these rounds, these exciting maps are very short indeed. It seems we are still awaiting one remaining member on Phoenix. I'll, uh, I'll hit up the team captain, see what's going on. But uh, they were already just a minute ago, so... Must have been some sudden technical difficulty. Maybe someone had to drop out last minute. Oh, just as I say that, of course, the prediction reigns true, and uh, Mano has instantly come in the second I'll begin that sentence. So, now I'm hoping that we'll be going in very shortly. This time, with fingers crossed, and yes, my fingers crossed, it does in fact save us here. Here we go, finally, into the first rounds, the first map, the first exciting showdown between these two teams this week for Phoenix versus Globochem. Well, kind of quiet on the, a little bit quiet on the Phoenix side, you can hear Sri Lankan. Saying something to Malno, and is that a flashlight on the shield? Okay, interesting tactics already, I see. I wonder what he's going to be doing with that. Potentially trying to bait someone out. That is a tactic Mano absolutely loves. He loves to bait people out with that flashlight. In fact, I think he does it in real life as his hobby. He loves it. It's caught me off guard several times. you got to be careful of it. Oh. I never really thought of using that angle before, but Russia Z with that nice two-story position to spot anyone coming across the northwest. That is actually fantastic, and I'm not entirely sure how quickly you can get there, but if there's anyone dancing around that kind of northwestish area on the back wall, that position is certainly very solid to catch them. We head over towards the southwest side. Hi, me for. There you go, it's Sri Lanka and probably Mano. Yes, it is. Mano and Sri Lanka moving around the southwest. They're going to be the ones that want to try and tango with old Thunder Pilot and especially Auto. This Western Courtyard area is always a, uh, where's the market rather, is always the kind of the death zone. The long range of engagement, plenty of nade kind of space, plenty of cover for Volk. It's a very tough one for, uh, for good old Marsock. So far, this is rather kind of a passive to what I really expected. Hold on. No, I've just spotted that. This is not passive at all. This is typical Global Chem. Pads on the absolutely mad flank here. What is his plan? What is this? There's no way. This could actually pay off big time. He's on the complete flank behind all of the Phoenix's main offense. Well, two members of it anyway. And they have absolutely no clue whatsoever. This simply, this can't work. I, I refuse to allow this in my mind that this could work. I'll we'll have to come back to that in a little bit though, because he's uh, he's being rather slow with it. Let me know if you can't see the crossing, Ars. Oh, Ars is going to be watching that crossing. That means Russia Z is going to be kind of getting free reign to come up from behind. Yeah, Shots are coming out from auto. That means he has spotted Mayno crossing in the southwest. Looks like his brother's going to be backing him up there. 
Rossi is continuing to clear this here. Panza is still sitting back in the northeast area, not really doing too much. I'm kind of surprised. I, maybe he's waiting for the push to come out, then he can really take them off guard. But there goes Rossi. Z. Oh, I think somehow must have heard some footsteps, got a little bit too aggressive peeking out from his cover. And down he goes. But Pants, yes, of course. The one on the flag, just as he heard those shots, kicks into action. Gets that refrag, and now he's looking for some more. He wants that blood. Mayno has approached pretty far up the, uh, up the southwest corner there. That's pretty dangerous. And there goes Pants, picking off another. There goes Gibbs. Rest in peace. Here goes Mayno moving up pretty close now to the objective on the southwest with the shield. He sees the shots coming up from Auto to take down Sri Lankan. Going to be popping off that nade or is that flash? It's a nade. And it's a good one as well. Takes him down though. Not quite an insta kill. Moving on to objective now. The revive comes out from Thunder. He's going to be rushing them though. Mayno has to get this if he wants to try and take down Globachem and possibly even get the cap. But he's the last one left. He's cornered one, two. Down he goes. An unfortunate end for Mayno there. A fantastic flank from Pants. And that is it for Phoenix that round. That was, that was certainly action-packed. I think that's what I was expecting coming up from these two teams. Is, uh, it was certainly that. He had the... Uh, I, I was, was starting to call it slow-paced and passive. Then I saw that Pants move just in the northeast. He, he doesn't care. He's way behind enemy lines. He's doing a good job. He picks off one, picks off two. So, uh, rushes, he does take down Arsenic, and boom. It just all falls apart for Phoenix from that point there. Two get picked off as they try and cross the street, that being uh, Sri Lankan. And uh, another member, I can't remember exactly the name. Uh, pause, that's it. And then we have uh, just remaining Mayno. Desperately pushing up, gets the nice nade, the combat nade over the, uh, over the fence and the brick, but it's not quite enough. The shield... And the pistol combo just not entirely working out for him. Though he did almost say he could have pulled that off he was, if he wasn't uh, flanked by... Uh, I, I believe it was either Pants or it may have been Arsenic. No, it couldn't have been Arsenic. He was dead. But I'm, I'm going to say it was Pants then. Just off memory. Oh, little bit of a false start. Are they doing it? Are they not? There we go, they're going in. So heading into the second round now. This is the juicy one. This is where I think of the uh fucking kill people. Don't fucking hide like a bitch. Come on. Okay, good plan from Sri Lankan. Kill people, don't hide. Here we go, pep dog to pause. Don't be afraid. That is the uh, true life lesson for uh teams you just you can't be afraid you've got to trust in your teammates it really is a very important thing if there's no trust between the teammates it's game over hence why the top teams in the world have you know their famous brotherly combos where the trust and the uh the familiar uh, familiarity between the teams can lead them to victory when rushes he takes down arsenic he doesn't have that power of the brother to protect him though toast does take down Sri Lanka because he doesn't either. That was a very risky attempt to cross over there. I'm not sure what the plan was there. He's not going to be able to catch anyone else over. Post was just finally finished off by Rushley. They uh, kind of pushed up, finished him off. That's a good plan. Getting a little bit anxious. He knows that someone's going to be coming around the north relatively shortly, and that shortly is going to be Pants. But he's being aggressive. Yeah, I think the pep talk from uh, Sri Lankan did, in fact, get to the team with him and uh, another member rushing out into the street to die. And then rushes he pushing out aggressively to potentially catch off uh, a few people here. And it actually appears that Phoenix only lost Sri Lankan, so one of them must have been revived, or I was just misremembering there. Regardless, Phoenix are in a much better position than Globochem right now. Especially with this, uh, as I said, behind the lines, Rush's E position. Walter is very carefully checking this area. He's definitely feeling some anxiety about the possible enemy incursion. To his friendly territory and uh, possibly some rummaging on his corpses. Rushley definitely knows Otto here is, is uh, here now. That that kind of clicking of the mag tube. 
has definitely given away his location. But Pants is actually pretty far ahead. If you check on the little uh, mini-map in the corner there, you can see he and another member of Global Chem are pushed up into the Western Courtyard. And uh, if Auto can get taken down by Rush Z just here, then he could totally just flank around and take maybe two, more likely one. And he does have the potential to end this round with a triple. Well, Rush Z does not want to peek up. He's too spooked. Playing it passive. He's watching the corner. He knows he'll be able to spot them through that tiny... Tiny little gap between the wood there. But he can't. He blends in too well. Oh, never mind. He's not, he's not yet come up. But he is going to be coming out now. The shots do ring out. None of them hit, but the auto shots do. The smoke's out. The C4 goes off. Thunder goes down from that. Pants picks off Mayno, though, in the refrag. He's going to be going for that revive very quickly in the red smoke. No one on Phoenix is going to be able to contend this. Yeah, potentially a team kill coming out. If Global Chem aren't careful, that was something you say too often. There goes Pants. Looking for another. Not able to quite get the shots off in the smoke. He's throwing out the frag, though. It's Poz. Poz is going to walk into it, but somehow he doesn't get him, though. Auto and Thunder pick off Poz at the same time. And now we are left with just Gibbs. He has the good angle, though. Well, not if there's someone coming around the mini market there. He's going to have to rush back to objective right now. You can see the player model illuminated through the walls. This is dangerous. And you can see him just out of the corner of his eye. Somehow Gibbs didn't spot him, nor did the member of Globochem. But the flank is coming out. It's a total triple pincer here. I don't even know what you'd call it, a triangle. This is big, bad news for Gibbs right now. He has no idea where they are, but they all know where he is. Down goes Gibbs. Auto picks him off. And the second round does go to Globochem. Wow. I don't know if I would have expected that. I certainly didn't expect the uh, the attempted rush across the southwest. That was incredibly risky. If that would have paid off big time, though, if the smokes were just a little bit on point and Sri Lankan had gone around to the south, that is a very annoying position to deal with from a personal experience. It's an absolute nightmare. In fact, I hope no one ever does it again because if someone gets across, you have to focus on them. You can't go mini market or west market. You have uh, west courtyard. You have to focus them down because otherwise, there's an ever-present fear that they're going to be flanking you very quickly. Here we go now, moving in for this third round and uh, possibly the chance for Phoenix's comeback here. If they can just pull off the right moves. Okay, treading a nades. This could be the right move. Ooh, pushing hard north. I'd be interested in this. Bans is going 4-0 already. He's warmed up. The supernatural reactions as a Someone said in chat, they are kind of spooky. Look at the strategic C4 placing. Strategic T4 placing, that doesn't matter though. Tosh has already rushed out, taken one. But he has been down yeah. in the process. Pats can go for that hey, revive quick though. No? There you go, he's going for that revive nice and quick. Speed revive, but I don't think Pats is aware that they're all in this northwest area. Somehow he hasn't been spotted there. Someone was looking through that window directly at him, and uh, that spooked me. Potentially just waiting for another shot, and yes, they were. Maynard picks him off. Oh, and Toast is under fire from Paz through the smoke and the woods. They're both unaware, though. Toast, the smoke covering Paz's movements, and there he goes. Two members of Global came downed in just 60 seconds. That is a rather unusual. Make that three members of Global came downed in 60 seconds as Thunder goes down, too. And now we are left with a Sri Lankan shield. Moving in with a nade. Straight over, nice slam dunk. Not going to do anything. Alas, the C4 does go off from auto. That was pads of the place that earlier on in this match. 
Austin oh, goes down as well. Pause. Actually, it's in Sri Lankan too. The, the nade from Maino picks him off. And now we are just left into a 2v1. Globochem at the disadvantage here, though. They have the advantage position. And they have the advantage information as well. Maino thinks he's above, I believe. Oh, now he'd be correct in assuming that. He's going to be rushing out, dropping down below. Coming in, trying to flank Maino. And it's going to work out very well for him. Now we're just left with a 1v1 situation. He's coming in from the east side here. He's looking out for if he runs out or tries to go upstairs. And that is a good move here because that's exactly what Otto's going to be doing. He takes him down the second he tries to rush out to get upstairs. And Phoenix put themselves on the board for the first time in this match and in this series. Fantastic work from Phoenix that round. Uh, I, I'm gonna say I didn't expect the uh, full Northwest push. I, that's always a risky one, I find, because uh, as we saw with Toast, he rushed out into the West uh, Courtyard, picked off one. Sometimes that can end with much worse, where you get picked off uh, potentially two or three. I know Scorpio is a big fan of doing that sometimes. Loves to rush that uh, West Courtyard. It's very annoying to deal with. Spooks you because you're just out of spawn and ah, he's on you. We got the 13 bits from uh, Todd Howard of the uh, casting team. Not that Todd Howard. No, sorry, not Todd Howard at all. It's Todd Habercorn. Oh, the names are very confusing to me. And we also got 400 bits from Don Patron. Thank you. It all goes to the casters for uh, the uh, support and the time that we all put in. Sleepy and Noman and Knights. Myself, I've been slacking though. I'm a slacker. Through and through, a slacker. Alright, now we're in for the fourth round of this series, and it's going to be the same objective, of course. It's going to be Phoenix on the defense and a southwestern spawn. Pretty sure this is the same one. 99% sure it's the same spawn. I've been slacking in my league kind of research. I've forgotten the spawns. This is a dark time. Bans is mumbling something to himself. I don't quite know what. Potentially some kind of him for supernatural reflexes. Someone's already trying to take a piece of him. And Fees are being pretty aggressive, I think, with some of these positions. Rush is kind of in a standard one. Though. I haven't seen someone play this in quite some time. Because normally, if it's, a, uh, if it's a southeast board, you just get instantly railed because they have much better cover. Oh, no, Pause definitely doesn't have much better cover. He gets taken down by Orto. And now that northwest side is clear for Globocam, but it seems we're only going to be sending one man up this way with uh, Sri Lankan, or rather not Sri Lankan. Who is that there? That is Maino on the backup for the northwest and the western courtyard as a whole. Going to be looking out for one man, but I think you can see him dancing about in the shadows. But it's just too far away, too tight of an angle, too fast. We're going to catch a shot on him. Secret rooms of Bazaar. They don't exist. Only just spectators. I don't like that. I'm gonna go downstairs. Hmm. Going downstairs can be a dangerous move. May not pay off for Phoenix later on down the line, but Glover can be still kind of slack in here. They're sitting in the southeast, sitting in the uh, north, the uh, northwest. The north Rush City has spotted one member way up there. I don't know what he did there. He was just looking up towards the ceiling. Yeah. I believe that is arsenic. That's an arsenic type move. In fact, I'm going to confirm my suspicion. It's an auto move. Never mind. Close enough. Auto arsenic. I'll tell the difference. Oh, this is a pretty solid rotation from Rush Z. If he looks towards that red smoke and doesn't get too distracted by the other sounds around him, he's going to be able to spot one member of Globocan moving through the smoke 
into the mini market or into the blue room, but that's not going to be the case. He got in there nice and safe. Rather, he backed way off. Hard to get in depth there. That's kind of surprising. And Pads. Pads, no. He's killed Toast now. Mado is looking for blood. He's coming over the top. Pads tries to one hand it and he gets it. But it did a trade. I can't believe that. I can't believe it. Thunder picks off rushes as well. The one handed spirit of Pads lives on in the rest of the Globa Chem. Oh dear. Oh, Thunder's going to be picking off another as well. He sees his butt peeking out. He's taking that. Now we're just left with one remaining member of Phoenix. It's Sri Lankan in a dangerous position. One coming in from the north, potentially for the cap. If Sri Lankan just stays silent here, this could be a bad, bad time for Phoenix. Because there is actually one man on objective. Sri Lankan is not going to be able to realize this. Auto has to go for this right now. They can get this slick and smooth in just five rounds. But Sri Lankan's dropping down. He knows he's hunting for Thunder Pilot. Goes round. Unfortunately, cannot make the shots. He goes down, but there is no cap, so all is good for Phoenix that round. Oh, and with this center south objective, the ice cream truck objective, it could be a dangerous time for Globocam going in here. Phoenix can kind of, if they can channel their spirit, the, the, the channel their spirit of, uh, I don't know what we'd call it, channel the chicken spirit to just go straight forward, no fear, and attack something. And I have a feeling they're going to be able to get a cap here. I, I've, I'm feeling it. Globocam being pretty aggressive with their moves. They're sending pants on the utterly mad flanks across the world I, I, I feel like I can do it I'm actually guaranteeing that Phoenix can go in hard and fast and get this cat nice and smooth not sure what Toast is doing there he's, he's took his headset off he's not even prepared for this he was taking a break It appears we may have lost audio for one reason or another. I will very quickly attempt to uh, fix this. Please stand by. There we go. Audio is fixed. Don't know why that happened, but sometimes it does. Luckily, resolved very quickly. And this is a pretty northeast move, so they're not looking for a direct confrontation. At least Phoenix isn't, though. Rush as he certainly was. He takes down Pants. The ace gone. Bad news, potentially, for Globacan. They are still four members of Globoc and Strong, and that might as well be a full team. Or oh, potentially that could get taken down another peg. Thunder Pilot goes down. Rush Z getting some very, very important picks here. This could potentially allow for a very strong push to the objective from the east in a short period indeed. They picks one. Can't quite confirm any more. Blanken is going to be given free access along with pods on the southeast side. I don't know what Sri Lankan's doing now. Is he moving up towards the tank to move for the green smoke? That would make... Oh, no. He's grabbing the shield. That is definitely the good move. And what is Rush Z doing here? The aggressive move through the smoke across the street looking for kills and looking potentially to get onto the objective. There are already two remaining members of Globochem, so the objective coverage is not too great right now. Auto has heard Rush Z. And Toast is going to be there to try and deal with the member up in that two-story. No, Toast is definitely at the disadvantage, I think. Oh, there we go. The peek out, but Rush Z isn't prepared for it. He goes down. But the smokes are coming in. Or that's a nade. But it doesn't quite do anything. Sri Lanka goes down. The rest of Phoenix is not really there to support. They're all fragmented. Poz goes down as well. And now we are just left with one remaining member. That's Gibbs, the captain. 
can't quite get the shots onto objective. Sad time. It takes full damage. The cursed full damage. Oh, Gibbs is in a very difficult situation right now. He has three minutes remaining. Plenty of time to do anything he really wants to, but... I don't believe he can pull it off. It's such a difficult thing. Attacking this particular objective. With one remaining member against two. Against one, it can be more possible. Even then, it's very, very difficult. But against two, it's a pipe dream, I think. But I still believe with that LMG, he could potentially pull it off. Feeling the pressure. He's looking around all nervous. I think Glover came getting nervous as well. Look at that. I saw someone prancing about. What is Toast doing? Point t <laughs> Tapping the tips of his fingers together. I'm just doing some quick draw tests against the far southwest of the map. He's not feeling the pressure. He's just keeping warmed up. Zero pressure at all. Slowly but surely, Gibbs is trying to cross this street. A minute 30 remaining, so he does still have quite a lot of time if he wants to make any moves on this objective, but it all relies on not being heard, I think. He could sneak into the objective and be very successful, but one footstep slightly too loud. Very bad news. Oh, I think Auto just heard him breathe. Oh, toast with those quick draws. It did pay off. He came down the exact lane. And down he goes. The rather slow end to that. But Globochem wins that round. We'll be going into the second map, whatever it may be. So we do have the tank ban and the Suburbia 1 ban. Well, Suburbia as a whole ban, technically. But what kind of maps do we have left? We have Downfall left. We have Cargo left. We have Quarantine left. We have Subway left. And uh, that's it. No, we have Snow Peak as well, of course. The new map, Snow Peak. So we've got five remaining maps. Downfall, Cargo. I'm feeling the Cargo at some point coming out from Global Chem. And they are the away team. So this second map should be their pick. And... Uh, if my prediction is correct, we'll be seeing a cargo, but then again, they have arsenic ready. So downfall is also very much, very much likely. And also some thanks to uh, two alter game for the 100 bits and Phil Hendry, 100 for four bits. Always good to see the support for the, uh, for the old VRML. It does seem like this second map is going to be a uh, a quarantine one. A quarantine pick. I can see Arsenic working very well here. You know, I've seen him pick off people with a headshot into the kill with his 12 times. Several times on quarantine. It's really kind of uncanny. I don't want to play him ever. It scares me too much. I imagine we're going to be seeing him come out. They are on Marsock. So this was their pick. And they're starting off with a tank objective. Oh. <laughs> I'm very sorry, Phoenix. But that objective starting off with. This is not going to end well at all. I do remember in past seeing some moves come out from Phoenix. That they managed to slip into the objective. Slip into the objective. 
with just under the cover of smoke. They didn't even need a shield. They just literally walked in. I don't remember what team it was against, but they did perform very well. So if they can just hold out on this one round, make sure a cap doesn't come out, then potentially we could see a cap from them just next round when they were on Marsoc. And here we go in to the first round of this second map for the Globochem. Well, the Phoenix versus Globochem series. Dancing off, of course, that tank objective I mentioned. Toasty's doing it again. What is this? What is he doing? I don't know. He's throwing away his pistol in classic post fashion. I don't even want to know what he's doing with his fingers, though. Foul. We're going to see a big confrontation in the north here. Absolutely big. And if Rush can get this nade dead on, it could be catastrophic for Global Game. Here it comes. One, two. Doesn't go quite long enough. The counter nades. The counter flash is good from Global Game. Pants rushing up. You're going to see Rush not able to get him. He does get him on the second volley. Pause coming around looking for the kill. But unfortunately, it's Arsenic who takes him down from afar. And now Toast is pushing up Maino. Takes down Auto in the kind of central area. Though Pants is on the roof. Takes down Maino in the reef rack. He is absolutely ecstatic. He's absolutely manic about that kill. I don't know what exactly happened. But he loved it. Absolutely loved it. That was a very fast, classic, classic Globochem quarantine round starting off here. We're going to be going in some slowest paced, more relaxing things here. At least I imagine. We got two men on the roof. Pants, of course, uh, running about is coordinating with Arsenic. But Toast knows there's going to be someone inside. A drop has come out from someone. I believe it was just a disconnected player. And Toast gets... <laughs> he just shrugs. He, he just... Ble Unbelievable Toast. He's on the objective now. The utter disrespect is palpable. He's trying to go for the cap, but there's someone coming in from the flank stopping him. He's going to be getting behind the wall, though. Capping out here. This is going to be the two points. For Globo Cam. Oh... Toast is gonna be Toast is gonna kill Pants. He's gonna kill him. He stops the cap. I can't believe it. He stopped that cap, killing the one remaining member of Phoenix miles away from the objective. The communication was there, I believe. Pants though. He wanted no part in that cap. Global Chem tradition, no caps. Ever. Caps are banned in the Global Chem uh, in the Global Chem circles. So it does appear that we're just going to be waiting a little bit longer this round, or well, this inter-round period for one member of Phoenix to reconnect. And it's Mayno who dropped last round, though he was already dead, so there were no major losses for Phoenix last round, luckily. But I imagine it was just a quick reconnect, maybe he had some tracking issues or something along those lines, pretty common. It's always good to do a quick reconnect, restart, refresh of everything, just in kind of the inter-round period. Don't want to make sure. You want to make sure it doesn't screw you up later on. That's the most important thing. Absolutely.
Uh, it appears that Maino and Kraya, in fact, crashed just after he went down during the last round. So, going to be a second before he comes in, but it's already been quite a while. So, should hopefully be coming in in the next 20 seconds, roughly. So, you can enjoy the kind of, the, you know, the classic uh, memory bringing back. Not entirely sure if there's a word for that. The reminiscent tunes of uh, the Onward Radio. It looks like this may take a little while, so we will go to a short three-minute intermission while we wait for these teams to uh, fully get back in and ready. So we will see you shortly.
All right, then we are back now. Took a little bit of a little bit of a hot minute there, but we are back in now. They had to rehost the lobby, so we're not on the tank objective. Global can will not uh, have to face and deal with that objective. But they will have to deal with this one instead. <laughs> oh, Thunder Pilot dropping the C4 and spawn the classic. He's he's so sad. He was absolutely infuriated that he dropped that C4. I would be too. It happens constantly. Sad times. What is, what is this up and down bobbing motion? He's listening to music, I think. He's feeling good. Post the praying rituals have paid off. Joe Smiles is uh, looking to found a new religion or something along those lines. And he's getting aggressive now. I oh know, he's just changing position to the inner ruin area, the killing just spot, as it's uh, known in its EU circles. Roger, let's lock him down. Do we know if any made it across north? Oh, Globochem are going to be able to lock down Globochem here. Uh, Phoenix, rather, here. I'm loving it. This is the classic Globochem move. Phoenix have been very slow about moving out of their spawn area, and this is why you've got to be quick. Maybe this is the intentional tactic. They're waiting for Globocam to start rotating. Because those two going north are going to be unable to back up the objective right now. Well, very surely either. Schlanker is looking for the one by the uh, the ambulance. But he's not going to be able to find them, unfortunately. And Rush is going to be looking to contend with the two up in that north side. That is definitely a good idea. Lots of shots, lots of nades, but they're doing really nothing. The Toast finally hits his targets on Gibbs, takes him down. No revive possible. Now, Pads on the flank. Rush D takes down Thunder Pilot. Toast takes down Poz. Pads is on the tank. He's actually behind the main enemy force right now. He sees Poz, or rather, Rush D up on the roof. Not able to take him down, but he's on the flank. He makes it, but though the call out from Rush D has come out, and then uh, his teammates, the rest of Phoenix, are going to be aware. That central side, the central east side, is in fact very dangerous. Pushing far east. Rushy can still see him. He's kind of locked pants in here. There's no way Pants is going to be able to get out unless Rushy either misses all of his shots, like an entire magazine worth. I'm, I'm, I'm. Or he gets too aggressive from peeking out uh, kind of the sides of this metal antenna tower. I guess that would be what it's called. So far, he's just keeping in comms with the rest of his team. Officer Statham and Sri Lankan in the south here. They are going to be the ones that deal the main brunt to globe again. Here. They're in a pretty good position. No. So, they do also have Toast, able to potentially look over here, lock them down. And also, of course, Arsenic, the ever-present threat on quarantine, potentially also able to lock them down. Oh, but it's Toast who takes the first kind of breaking of ice. As he takes down off to Statham to now in a 2v4 situation. A major advantage to Globo Chem. Sri Lankan's actually moved up here. Though he is in a very bad way. He did take a shot there. Arsenic downed himself. Oh, he ran into the fire, I think. Oh, no. That's so unfortunate. Now, Toast is left to be the only one defending directly on top of this objective. The auto is there to back up. Toast does find Sri Lankan. But we are left with Rush Z coming in from the north very quickly here. Potentially could take down one, maybe even two. Potentially even a cap if he's super lucky. No way. No way. No way. This can't happen. Auto, he's going to peek out. I know he's going to ruin it. I can feel it. There's no way he's going to be allowed to cap here. Not in a trillion years. No. Oh. Phoenix, they're going to get the cap hit. No, he was spotted last minute. Oh, Auto, the crusher of dreams. The crusher of dreams. He was so, so close. Ah, oh, that I can feel Rush's ease pain there coming in from the long flank on the north. The one brand remaining right on objective, being nice and stealthy. Then Auto peeks out and ruins it for everybody. Well, everyone except Globochem. Ah. Oh. 
You can't recover from that one mentally. It's impossible. <sighs> Damn. Phoenix do still have at least two more rounds to avenge. Avenge old Rush Z there and take down Auto. And I believe maybe they're going to follow the same pattern and get the rounds just off that kind of two point area. Maybe even if they're uh, slacking a little bit, they can pick up the pace on that third round where it's the do or die situation. That's always where the comeback start. The three O's. It's lights of fire. It lights a very strong fire. Uh, I believe it was Sun Tzu who said, um, what was it? Something along the lines of there's nothing more dangerous than an, an enemy with uh, nothing left to lose. And that is very much the case. In Onward, at least. <coughs> but here, we are ready for this next round. The next round being the third, and it's of course going to be the same objective this time with Phoenix on the defense. Acrobatics from Officer Statham. And whatever that was between Rush Z and Gibbs. I'm not sure if I want to know. So far, seeing pretty standard with this rollout on both sides, though. I thought they were sending two up to the northwest on Phoenix, but no, they're hanging back in a standard defensive behind position. The, they're working out pretty well, I think. Behind the woods but Pants woods has got some information already on their locations. Everyone know where I'm talking about? They're going to be using these to re-maneuver. I was already pre-firing that. Somehow there's a pre-fire angle there. That's one I never even thought of. That's very nice, but it's a very tight position. The shots come up from Ambulance. Takes down Toast with the nice headshot. Well, one down in North Fort Yard. The shots are coming out from that center, though. Actually, no. It wasn't from center. Where was that? I think that may have been a little bit of friendly fire. Just a little bit. If not, at least Rushdie takes down Pants again by the roof, though. He's going to be getting revived by either Arsenic or Auto. Yeah, Auto's just going to go pick him up. Unfortunately, they can't confirm that. Oh, God. No, no, no. There's two. There's two there. Oh, he really wants the kill, though. Auto does get the... Uh, Revive on the Panzer Thunder picks off pause. Officer Statham tries to get the shots from the long range, doesn't work out. Rush Z does finish off Pants though, which is the vital pick they need. Very unfortunate, but they have allowed one to cross to the southeast. They know that he has crossed over. So Rush Z, in theory, should be flipping back to watch that, but there's either been no call out or he's not worried about watching it. Because currently there is kind of a free path for Thunder Pilot to move up and take him down. Slowly doing it. Rush, he's exposing himself. The shots come out and down he goes. Where was the call out from Officer Statham, I wonder, about him crossing over? Did he maybe think he got it? That is a, that is a, a potential explanation for what went on there. And there was also, of course, the man in the southeast. Maybe they think he was still, they didn't realize he went down. They thought all was good. That's definitely possible. Here come the smokes though. The communication from Thunder seems to have triggered a cascade of smoky particles. And potentially even a flank from Sri Lankan here. Or at least it's going to be able to take down Arsenal or looking to take him down. The nade comes out doing nothing. Sri Lankan, alas, goes down. Thunder picks off Ultra State from on the objective as well. But the shots ring out from one remaining member. It's Gibbs. He's yeah, he's the one that takes down Thunder Pilot. Now he's got to go to the objective and defend this. The cap is coming out from Arsenic. Three, two, one, game over. That is the cap, but no! Oh, sorry. Oh. I couldn't even put it in. Like, the okay. working. Oh, there must have been some bug on the side of Globacam there. I thought that was the cap. It looked perfect, but alas, no. They finished off that one remaining member, Gibbs. 
And we are going into the fourth round. Now, this fourth round, this is going to be the dangerous one. This is where Phoenix can get their comeback. There's nothing left to lose. There's nothing left to lose at all. If you're three points down, so the best thing to do is do incredibly risky and stupid things that no team would expect you to do. And that's how you know that you're coming out good side of a match. So if that starts working, you keep doing it. And if that stops working, you do something else. Do that cycle forever, and it's good. Looks like they're psyching us out with another little bit. false start, but they're going in proper now. This fourth round, of course. The danger round for all involved. No, no, I'm gonna go around. Fuck it. Actually, you're gonna get, I'm gonna get lit up here. They're, they're gonna get me on the cross. They can see all the way down. Yeah. This crater spawn is never good. It's an awful spawn. Host is dancing. The smokes were not exactly ideal from Global Chem either. Mistakes all round, it seems. Ambulance, right? Ooh, some shots already coming out. Just suppressive into the smoke from Russia Z. Not going to tag anyone at all, but... And what is this defensive from Globochem? There you go. It's kind of shifting now, but that was very strange starting off. They were all kind of in line, just in the middle of the street. I got very confused for a second. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But it makes a little bit more sense now. One's moved to tank. One in the western courtyard. Got him. And one, of course, on the tank, as I mentioned, takes down Gibbs. And it's good old Arsenic. Ready to take down anyone on the roof. Ah, oh, Seth Boding chat. It's been a long time since I've seen you, I feel. Good to see. It's always good to see familiar faces in the uh, in the VRML community, which can be found on vrmasterleague.com slash onward, or potentially other games, which I shan't mention for fear of incurring wrath of people. I haven't had much action past that initial kind of burst. The boss is going to be the one to try and deal with. The, whoever that is in Raphael's spot. Thunder Pilot, that's it. I wonder if he has a C4 to use, much like Raphael did, I believe, in a beginner's match. He has the clacker. He has the clacker, but where's the C4? This concerns me. I don't like seeing a clacker and not seeing the C4. It sets off some primal instinct of fear. Pants with a nice long range pick off onto Poz and Arstic again picks a second one onto the north there. They should learn their lesson. That is a very dangerous pathway. If you wanted to contend uh, with Arsenic, you gotta you gotta bring out that scope. And Pants is picking off another again. Rush's E goes down. Bad news. Oh Pants takes a hit to the shoulder somehow okay. I don't understand, but okay. He's fine. Arsenic's in a tight, close range engagement between someone there. Maybe it's just shooting at ghosts. There's only really one at the base of this roof, and it's Sri Lankan. No fear going straight in. Three points! Three points for that brilliant nade! Wow! Bouncing off. That's unbelievable. Clip that. The perfect nade to win the round. Bouncing off the edge there. Absolutely fantastic. 
Well, that certainly wasn't what I expected because that was utterly amazing of a last round. And very quickly, they're going to the next one. So we've got to be quick with this bit. But this is going to take a little bit of a minute for me to load into Snow Peak. It's uh, it's rough on the old hard drive. We can hopefully pick it in here, though you wouldn't be able to see it because we're still working on the UI update. It's going to take a hot minute. Don't worry about it. There we go. It is picked. You will see that later on. I'm hoping anyway. Well, we can just kind of wait for this round to start. Maybe some technical difficulties on the side of Glover can, though. One of their players has dropped. And this is Phoenix's pick, interestingly. Oh, they brought in Raphael, and he's just saying snow, snow as he comes in. Okay. Can't quite tell if that was sarcasm or a genuine, very mild enthusiasm. It seems they brought in off the I'm still keeping the same roster on Phoenix, but they swapped out Arsenic for uh, old Sign Raphael. Hurtle Man. Which I find is interesting because Snow Peak is actually quite a large map. It has its twists, it has its turns, it has its close range objectives, but like 50% of the map is outside super long range with uh, not too many dividers, especially over the lake area. There you go, Arsenic's appeared. Appeared in chat to spoil everything. No spoilers. Spoilers are banned. Minus 50 MMR for every spoiler. Every spoiler, every person who spoiled is minus 50 MMR. It's a very harsh punishment, but it's well deserved. Heading in though. Snow Peak the round. The round, the map that is almost never played in Lee, but has started to make a occurrence within the last, I'd say, week, week and a half, somewhere around there. Started seeing it more often. We start seeing it with, I believe, the Coletto's match. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, Oh, we're going inside, into the tunnels, into the snaky, snaky land. Definitely worth bringing in Raphael for starting off with an objective like this. And you can see what I mean about how big the map was. They're already right next to each other on the map. And uh, it's going to be a minute before they actually confront each other, I think. Or maybe not. The nades are already flying. They're chasing each other in circles. He hears them behind him. He just reflexively throws that back. But it's a trade between pants and another rush as he goes down. Auto goes down. Mano goes down. Pause also goes down. Gibbs going to be trying to look out. Trades of toast. All the information going to be coming out from pads. Oh, the Raphael! <laughs> Raphael! The knife onto the shield user. <sighs> out of disrespect again from Globe again. They are cruel. Absolutely cruel. That, i got to say, that's not how... It, uh, I was... <sighs> Unbelievable. I said it was going to be a while before I actually started to see the, uh... <sighs> before they started to see things kick off, but nope. <laughs> they, uh, were straight in and out of that round in, uh, 43 seconds, so... There was certainly no fear going into that one, and, uh, they're actually going to be going to the next one immediately as well. This is unbelievable. Very fast-paced action today on this map. The same objective, of course, rotating the sides. 
onto this second round. I'm gonna watch this side. I see no movement here. Oh, he's glow again planning on this time. I probably would have got a kill because they're all running down the hall. Expect total carnage. And thank you for the uh the raid there, close streams. Always good to see people supporting the VR community. It's a good time. Get yourself a VR headset. Good fun. And the shots are already bring out between Pants and Rush. See, he goes down. It's bad news. Thunder gets the okay. refrag. Toast gets another. It's the alleyway of death there. Looks like he's gonna be looking for some smokes. Oh no, just the MK18. Rush he picks one. Looking for another. Picks two. It's all falling apart for Globochem there. Looks like someone may have dropped on the side of uh, either Globochem or Phoenix as well, so. Potentially could be dangerous. Look, it's a Phoenix drop. I believe they were already dead and out, though, so all should be good. Oh, here comes the quick peek around the corner. Rush to Z takes down Thunderpilot. Now we're in a 1v1. Th uh, Raphael manage does manage to take down Gibbs. However, this is still a 1v2 situation, though. They're in the death alleyway. 1 2 takes them both down. Clutches it, and again, another round in under 60 seconds. I didn't realize Snow Peak was such a fast paced map. Or at least that objective is utterly, utterly top speed. Unbelievable. Oh god. This is this is gonna be a that's gonna be a quick one. I have a feeling at least. We are already changing to a more uh, open paced and uh, Slightly slower, more therapeutic objective, that being in the far north, the hangar with the helicopter. As I like to call it, North North Hangar. There you go. That's an official call out from yours truly. Probably not super useful. Third round though. Shots already coming out from Pants. He's celebrating something. So I feel like they're gonna like people are just gonna. Just Ooh, another shield coming out from Phoenix, even on this open objective. That's pretty interesting. Oh, the shots are already coming out from Toast. Gibbs goes down. Mano is very surprised. Thunder takes down Rushes as well somewhere. Don't even know where he was. He must have rushed ahead somehow. Took a much, much faster path. Toast takes down another. Sri Lankan goes down. And it's just utter devastation here. Maino's looking for one. I doubt he's going to be able to find him, though. Oh, Thunder is sneaking up here. I just thought this may be a slightly more therapeutic objective, but this could be over in under 60 seconds again. Auto! Another one dead. Ah, uh, he thinks that's an enemy still. He just sprayed down Raphael. Utter bullying here. Oh, Thunder's out, but the nades are in. The nade is good. The nade is very good. Takes down Poz. Mayna going to be going for that revive. Going to be able to get it as well. The counter nade comes out. Not going to do anything. It could have got Thunder, but he was very quick with that back off. And the one coming around, it's also very quick. Harsh push here. He's at a massive disadvantage, though. Poz comes round, takes down Auto. Now we are in a 2v3 scenario, slightly more evened up. Panzer's coming in to try and deal with these two. And if Poz isn't careful, he's going to go down. Oh, the nade. Oh! <laughs> the beautiful nade there. Perfectly carves its way between the members of Phoenix, and down they go. Panzer choreographed that one, that's for sure. That's one for the uh, that's one for the montage books. As you as you could say. The Global Chem montages. We need some. We really need some. Now, there are a trillion nades you could pick from, a trillion players, a trillion rushes, possibly many of which are pants. Actually, very likely many of which are pants, so keep an eye out for uh, official Global Chem merchandise in the near future. They're going professional, but we're going into the fourth round now. Here we go. Where do you say they walk our the different spawn, a wildly different spawn, way up here in the uh, southwest by the dual hangars. Looks like people on Globacom are having some frame issues, though. Very unfortunate. 
Well, they're going to be fighting over the frozen lake this time. This will definitely lead some uh, slightly larger and very nade-heavy excursions. Some shots already went out. Seems to be just suppressive fire or fire to try and take someone down, but they all miss. Oh, Gibbs is in such an exposed position. Somehow he's not been spotted yet, though. I'm kind of amazed by this fact. He's sneaking his way across on the ice, hits the shots onto Toast, gets him in the headshot, though. The instant refrag from Pants takes him down, and we're left into the even 4-4. Only 40 seconds into this round. Potentially the final round, though. This one is for some decent marbles. Global M has already won the series. But this one is for that juicy MMR. And it's been a very quick map. A very quick map indeed. In fact, it has literally taken, I think, less than 10 minutes. And we may already be over with it. But potentially that's the fastest series that's ever ended before. Potentially. Fastest map, rather, not the series. The series has so far been average length, but this particular map, oh, it's been speeding through. I got, I killed one. In the back spot where we spawned. Just throwing them all. Definitely more therapeutic. We're into the four minute 30 round. We haven't hit this the previous rounds. This is the furthest we've gotten into the counter, into the old timer. Things have certainly slowed down. People are trekking through the snow like valiant snow warriors. I tried to think of a good word there and that was all that came out. I'm sorry. Need a thesaurus on hand here. It's not quite working out. They're very thick and hard to, hard to move your mouse on. Now you can't see him anymore. I hope you can see me. Only very slow, Glow. They become very, very reluctant to move out too much. Some shots are very far away on the literal opposite end of the map. This feels like an actual strategy Globacam has ready for Snow Peak. Coming in from the lake and coming in from the far reefs with much better cover. Definitely feeling this is a legitimate tactic and Poss is in the smog. That's a good one. They won't expect him to be directly in it. And the suppression of the nades coming in from the lake. That's Pats and Raphael starting to move in this way. Going to be the incursion onto the objective. The smokes are being relocated. No one is actually here to contest this. Flanken is perhaps the only one, and he's not got a good angle here. C4 gets thrown off. Not going to do anything, though. Pause takes down Auto. He flips back. To Raphael takes down Maino. But Pants kills Raph. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. He's going to be able to revive him, though. Thunder goes down. They've got to be quick. The action is popping off on the other side here. There goes the revive. They've got to be quick. They've got to duel up here to try and defend themselves from the enemies. The shots come up from Raphael. They're trying to hit the man. Walking out in the middle of nowhere. But finally, it's Pants who takes him down. Raphael's aim not quite up to scratch today. But coming in from the flank is Rosh Z takes down Pants. But actually looking for Raphael as well. The shots ring out from Pants. So the, shot, uh, the shots ring out from Raph, rather. Not quite able to do anything. But Sri Lankan on the flank is the one to finally take him down. Just after they had reached the objective. And finally, Phoenix put themselves on the board for the first time this map. And in the last two maps. Lots of team kills coming out from uh, Global again this time. Oh, this next objective could be a total wild card as to how it goes. I'm very interested of uh kind of experience this. This is pretty much my first taste of uh, Snow Peak in actual proper full-bodied uh, Diamond to Master action after the meta has uh, been given a little bit of time to settle. It's definitely looking like it can be a very slow or a very fast map. Don't get killed. Well, the teams are being pretty quiet. 
already got their communications out of the way. And this is a quite an open objective from memory. This is the one just in the little, the little hut, or just outside the little hut. I imagine you can cap inside the building on the corner. That is the right kind of radius for it. So if anyone gets inside this kind of area, it's bad news. But Global Camera fanning out massively. No tight defenses on this map. Not this objective, at least. To cast a wide net is to uh, have a strong net. Some kind of Sun Tzu metaphor like that definitely applies there. Don't worry about it. Seems that Phoenix can be using a similar kind of strategy as Globochem did last round. They're going for the two pincer prong strategy coming from opposite ends of the map, both with pretty good roots. So it's actually a, a good move, I'd say. From the west, you've got, take a look at the big map overhead. You've got all of that cover. You've got some open spaces. You've got good nade ability. It's close to objective, so you can nade the man currently on the objective. Then, of course, coming in from the northeast area. It's close to the objective. It's kind of standard, actually. Thinking about it a little bit more, but it has, does have the kind of depressions in the terrain, in the uh, in the terrain rather, and the trees for any good cover behind those. So I'm not entirely sure if the trees are in fact penetrable. I would like to think they are. At least from memory, they are. I believe I've shot capture many a time through them. This round is certainly much slower than the previous ones. Globem have kind of, you know, slapped themselves on the face. They've gone, hey, Phoenix have won a round. We've got to, we're going to buckle up. We've got to tighten our bootstraps. I've almost forgot the met my metaphor there. Auto, auto, almost got another team kill. He was careful to check his dad at that time, at least. Oh, there goes the confrontation. Starting off with Toast getting a nice headshot onto Gibbs. Now Maino is looking for the same kind of treatment, but Pants again! Another team kill onto him. Ah, oh, very unfortunate. Global can lose one of their own due to Pants yet again. I'm not even sure where Pants was. How did he get that team kill? Is he from the far north? I think so, because Maino was managing to pick him off there. Yeah. He was sitting on top of this kind of area here. I don't know how he made it up there, even. Strange. Oh, no, there you go. Pants was all the way over there. You can just see the corpse. Looks like my G-key failed me. There he is. Pants, rest in peace. The team killer. They are starting their final attack now. I can feel it. You've got Maino coming in, I believe that is. Yes, it is Maino getting the nice headshot on Thunder and cooling it. That's that's some disrespect. And got his friends coming from the south, about to have a very intense duel between one member of Global Camp with the shield, it's Sri Lankan versus Raphael the Turtle versus the Turtle. Sri Lanka definitely doesn't come out well. It's a trade between the remaining member, Rush Z, and we're left into a 2v1 scenario. Just Auto left on objective. The smokes are coming out. A good one to block that view, but Auto has retreated back to the objective, trying to lock down this area. Oh, here comes Poz. Not able to confirm anything, not able to do anything. He goes down immediately. Auto retreats further back on the objective, and Maino spots Auto. He's shooting through. This building is fully penetrable. So he has to be very careful. He cannot sit in there. One good LMG spray, one good magazine, and he is gone. But the good nade! The good nade is perfect. Landing straight onto Auto's head. Takes him down. Into the kill. Phoenix takes the round. And we're moving on to the sixth round. I called it. It's always the 3-0. Every single time it's the 3-0 comeback.
definitely feel the difference between those fast objectives and the slow ones we're getting now. Phoenix are so much more comfortable in these slow ones than they were in the fast ones. Which I find interesting. Because Phoenix being in there, uh, you know, the NA team, they're not the most aggressive NA team out there. But normally, uh, NA teams are pretty aggressive, but they're liking this slower, slightly slower paced action. Able to definitely draw out some, uh, some more picks, get the better breach onto the objective, some very nice nades, especially. I did, I, did, I did say this objective was quite prone to the old nade, and uh, he got naded. Clairvoyant, everyone, clairvoyant. Now we're in the sixth round and potentially the final round. Fiend is going to be buckling down, ready for Global Chem's offense. Listen, Perhaps they, Gibbs is not ready. He drops his gun. Around this side and then that side. Maybe we will split on the next one. Yeah, they have like. We don't have to worry. We can kill one here. The C4 right here, maybe. Mm. Some nice C4 placement. Potentially very solid. Just got to hope that tree doesn't block the explosion. I would hope so. <laughs> They're both getting confused over their positions and Rush as he gets a nice pick on the Raphael already. He is only down though. He can't able to but yeah, he can't get the re uh the old confirm from this kind of angle. But a nade. Rush is known for his nades and apparently he's known for his shots as well. Pants gets taken down. This is not looking good for Globacan. This could go to a 3-3. Rushes, he does have a nade on his chest. So if he throws one, it's solid. That could be looking at a double kill, potentially. Or at least get the confirm onto Pants and a down on the Thunder. Yeah, Thunder's going to get that revive onto Raphael. The shots are ringing out as well. The counter nade's coming out. It's a big one as well. Raphael does take him down. A very nice nade there. And Rush is just unpinned here. So he gets confirmed by his own. Raph's going to rush up. Start to push onto the objective here. Or at least Sri Lankan is going to be able to, uh, getting pressured here by him. And they're getting thrown out. Goes too far. Sri Lankan goes down. Raph picks him off. And Raph is momentarily blinded. Lots of smokes coming out in action here. Even from the enemy team, surprisingly. I'm not entirely sure what that smoke is used for, but it's kind of helping out Globo Chem there. And it's a very bright, offensively green smoke, too. It's rather vile to look at. Ooh, there goes a C4. I think Mano almost killed himself with it, really. Maybe use the explosion to allow himself to move to this location. Raph did just go down on the flank by a nice headshot from Gibbs. But Mane is going to be looking for auto. But it's Toast who finds him instead. They're moving up in a dual attack onto the objective here. It's just Gibbs and one remaining member. I believe that's Poz. Yes, it is. But he's kind of far from the objective. He has the good angle, though. This building is fully penetrable, but they're not going for it. Oh, here goes Poz with a rush up. Trades with one. Toast is down, but there's one coming in from the flank, and there is also Auto holding the four up front here. Gibbs is going to be rushing Auto, and it's not going to work out well. Very unfortunate. The down he goes. And that is it. Raphael getting 10 kills, and Toast getting 7. Rushers getting 9. Lots of kills going there. But unfortunately, that is going to be the series going towards Glover again. Not unexpected, but Phoenix put up a good fight, I'd say. Against the world champions. The champions of it all. Though I'm not quite sure if they are world champions after losing to beginners in the Button Cup. That is open to question now. I'm going to say they are the second world champions. Sorry, Arsenic. Sorry, but it's, that's the truth. That is the truth. But that is going to be it for this match. This is Phoenix vs. Global Chem wrapping up. If you want some more information on the VR Mars League, 
you can go to vrmarsley.com slash onward. Got all the information there. Kind of dates of season starts, ends, all of that. And you've got, of course, the link to the onward discord, discord.gg slash onward. VR Marsley kind of has a nice little base of operations in there. Be sure to join us if you're not already with us. So that'll be it from us today. We do have one cast tomorrow by the Nightfire and Noman. Keep an eye out for that. That should be a good one.